no, you know, you can't give a man a fish every day, every day, every day. You're going to make the most impact if you can teach that person to fish, just like your mom did when she said, congratulations, you're, I'm not buying you any more clothes. Yeah. You know, I became the queen of goodwill and I learned how to sew and, and, I, and I, had a lot of people, even when I was young, tell me I was very fashionable, but I was, you know, secretly super proud about how, you know, how uh, clever I was that I could, you know, they paid $300 and I did mine for $20. And, you know, it, it was really empowering for me to have that experience. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And the other thing I would say about that was, was that would be what I would call a paradigm shift. So right. when we go back to the concept of we're our own worst enemy, before I tell you what a paradigm is, let's look at why are we our own worst enemy? Have you ever noticed in life that whenever there's a problem, the same person is always there? Think of every problem you've ever had in your life. Hmm. Who is always there? Well, me, of yes. course. I am the common denominator, if yes. that's what you mean. That's right. Hmm. Thank you for admitting that so easily. And actually, I feel the same way. Um, um, Brian and I've been married for 33 years and um, whenever we have rocky you know, times, which is true, I'm like, well, I'm always going to be 50% of that equation. I, if I don't fix me, moving to somewhere else isn't going to change my contribution and I'm going to just keep bringing that same thing over and over again. And it, it, then it makes sense that, it, that with money, I'm the common denominator. That's right. right? That's right. So... If, if the problem in life is always us, let's name that problem the paradigm. Okay. And for most people, some of us have heard that word before, um, and it's getting tossed around a little bit more as the days go by, but how I define it is a paradigm is a multitude of habits. Habits define our life. When we wake mm -hmm. up in the morning, we think, I'm an adult, I'm making such great decisions for myself. No, you're not. <laughs> Your habits are making 95, 96% of the decisions, mm -hmm. and then you might get the other 5%. Um, the habits live in your subconscious mind. And so when we think about like, well, how do I get from one financial level to way up here? What we need to do is not necessarily focus on strategy. Let an expert be really good at the strategy. Sure. What your clients should do is learn to adjust their mindset and shift their paradigm. And then they're going to start getting the results that they want. Paradigm works just like the thermostat on the wall. And when people come to me and say, I feel stuck, I want better results, but I don't know how to get it. What's wrong with me? I'm a smart person. Why don't I have the things I want in my life? Right. What they're really saying is, I feel that it's the wrong temperature in this room, but no one has told me to go over and change the thermostat. And I didn't even know that I could do that in the first place. Well, I think when we have, um, it can be a paradigm shift can be circumstantial or it can be um, because we've had some sort of inner epiphany type of thing. I think of circumstantial paradigm shifts are getting married and having to adjust to the we yeah. versus the, the me or as a young person going away to college for the first time, you know, being a we, and now where it's, now it's a me, right. You know, and I'm all of a sudden I have to get up and no one's going to wash that cereal bowl for me. Yep. Or, um, or the birth of a first child. Now, right. you know, all those things are huge paradigm shifts. And I think that, um, you know, money, the paradigm shift in the money can be pretty profound when you figure out that it is, it, you, you do deserve it mm -hmm. and it's okay. Yep. There's another way to change a paradigm though, other than I would, I would group all of those into like an emotional shock okay. category. Okay. Circumstantial, right? Like, yeah, that's what I mean. They don't always have to be negative, but 9-11 and 2020. COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. A lot of people have paradigm shifts because of, you know, those circumstantial things, but right. usually those are shocking because it's a surprise and we have little to no control. Over They're external. It. Yeah. Right. So there is a way to control a paradigm shift. There's a way to do that on purpose. Okay. It's through repetition. And here's the beautiful thing. We have two parts of our mind. Oops, I'm Whoop. so sorry. That's okay. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between 
a lie and the truth. It can't tell the difference between imagined reality and what's really going on in the world around us. So truly people who are looking to change their results drastically in terms of wealth need to throw away those old concepts that they were programmed with because clearly thoughts of mm -hmm. I'm not good enough, our family doesn't deserve that, money's hard to make, we're going to run out of money, all those negative money thoughts, it's a conscious choice to say, I'm not going to think about that anymore. And instead, I'm going to dump a new lie into my subconscious mind. If you tell yourself a lie often enough, it becomes a truth. That's true. And you tell yourself more supportive things like money comes easily and effortlessly. I'm so happy and grateful now that money comes to me in increasing quantities through multiple sources on a continuous basis. If you tell yourself that 500 to a thousand times a day, you're going to see those results Sure. after some time has passed because you're thinking new you're thoughts, retraining your brain, your emotions are going to stir you are going to see opportunities. And instead of going, oh, that's not for me, because that's what your old paradigm says, you're going to go, wait a second, I could do that. And then you'll go into action and then your new results will appear. You know, another, a, a, a way that I can relate that to my own life, like a paradigm shift too, but it, this is where it's, it's a, a conscious thing. So um, I have a degree in graphic design and a degree in advertising. And um, when I became more proficient in that, um, I would look around and I would see fonts everywhere. And um, before I had taken those classes and had immersed myself in that, that education, I was oblivious to that. So I'm, I think, you know, when mm. you, when you change that mindset of money, you start, you seeing start it. seeing it. Yeah. So maybe um, how would that, how would that go into with the generational wealth and what would the, what would the connection be for that? I would tell people, first of all, make a decision. Nothing happens until you make a decision. And the decision first needs to be, yep, this is for me. That's what I want. And I'm going to do the heavy lifting of retraining my thoughts to cause that to happen. But that being said, it's, it's important to note that money is never the motivator. Yes, it's good to have wealth and large amounts of money, mm -hmm. but what does that money represent? So that's a really important point. You here's how to so important. I'm going to give three examples of how to set a really good money driven goal. And they're going to get increasingly better with each time that I list them. So I could say something like, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning half a million dollars a year in passive income. Okay, it's why is that good? Number one, it's written in the present tense. Remember, the subconscious mind can't tell the difference between a lie and a truth. So even though it hasn't happened out here yet, it's happening in here. Right. And we're telling it, this is already here. It's happening now. I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning Five hundred thousand dollars a year in passive income. Million dollars a year. We okay, let's let's up. Okay, it. yeah. So million dollars a year in for passive million dollar mail. My <laughs> yeah, it's it's an easier, more round number. So so happy and grateful now that I'm earning a million dollars a year um, in passive income. Um, it's specific, but you're right. A million dollars a year for a lot of people is something that they haven't even come close to yet. And that's what a really good goal should be. It should be inspiring. It should be somewhat scary. It should be something that you've never done before. Because if it is something that you've done before, it's not going to cause any growth. And sometimes when we set a goal that doesn't cause any growth, it actually moves us in the wrong direction. So yes, make it big, million dollars a year in passive income. But now we need to up our game a little bit let's add some emotion to it. So I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning a million dollars a year in passive income. And I feel so relaxed and thrilled at the same time. You can be thrilled and relaxed at the same time because we know having money fixes a lot of problems. And it's also thrilling 
because we can do a lot of cool things with that money. Mm -hmm. So happy and grateful now that I'm earning a million dollars a year in passive income and I'm so relaxed and thrilled. Okay, now we have specific. We do want to put a date on it. I'll mm. add that too. Interesting. The date is not to be something that we whip ourselves over. The date is just your best guess. You don't want to say, I will be so happy and grateful someday when, and not put a date to it. Just tie a date to it. Give it your best guess. I usually tie my goals to my birthday, you know, a year in the future or two years in the future. Okay. Um, because that's a really great birthday present, making something awesome happen for myself and for my loved ones. Um, but we're still missing an element. What are we going to do with that money? So the third example would be, I'm so happy and grateful now that I'm earning a million dollars a year in passive income. I'm feeling relaxed and thrilled because I get to drop everything and go on vacation whenever I want. So for my post Rona. So for my team, I would say I feel happy and relaxed that my team has reached their $40 million goal. And by doing so, we can um, go as a team to Barbados in August or, or September of next year. Yeah. Is that, is that a valid um, coach me? So how would I always say that? Right. I'm so happy and grateful now that it's September 2022 and our team has hit has hit. Okay. The has $40 hit. million dollar in production mark, which means that we all get to experience a wonderful vacation in Barbados and feel relaxed on the beach. Cool. So that's an actual goal that our team has. So that's pretty fun. Now, yeah. now I know how to to say it correctly That's in right. my own mind in the present in tense. the present tense yeah with a date and then say that I'll be happy and relaxed on the beach not you will be I, I am, am. Ah, now, I now, am I'm so happy and grateful now that it's September 2022 and our whole team is in Barbados happy and relaxed on the beach because we hit our 40 million dollar I'm gonna have to start playing music from Barbados in our team meetings yes. so we can have that mindset yep yeah that's awesome cool yeah. All right. Well, so what is an example for you of someone who has used their supportive money and their mindset to maybe start doing real estate investing? Do you have someone in mind? I do. So um, have you heard of uh, the author Neville Goddard? I don't think I have, but that he, doesn't. He was a thought leader. I'm going to write that down. Yes. Now. He wrote a book called The Law and the Promise. And there was Neville, a story, Neville Goddard. Goddard. There was a story from that book called The Doctor and His Wife. And they had a nice piece of property that their business was sitting on. But um, the way the money was structured within the business, they didn't want to use any of the business's money to develop a lot that they also owned that was this beautiful corner lot. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they owned a double lot. The business was sitting next to it. And so here they are with this empty corner lot. Okay. But they made the decision, we're going to have an awesome building there and we're not going to even spend any money making that happen. Wow. They, okay. they sat down. Yes, this is a true story. They sat down as a couple and they thought out their plans. They even drew out their plans. They visualized their plans. They repeated that goal that they had, probably very similar to one that we just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they lived in the end, meaning they knew, hey, this is already done. And then they relaxed. Cool. Um, and sure enough, a contractor showed up and he said, I don't really know why I'm here, but usually people come to me and I'm stopping in to see you, you have this wonderful corner lot and I'd really like to develop it for you. What can I do? And they said, well, you know, we would love that too, but we just don't have the money to invest right now in that. And he said, all right, well, I want to keep in contact and let me see what I can do. Are you open to that? Yes. So they let him go. And, you know, most people would have said, oh no, wait, come back. Let's work something out. But lo and behold, he went back to his office and some weeks later he showed up with plans 
and they were already drawn. So he, they wanted him, he wanted them to be an equity partner or a, I mean, a, a partner where they brought the, the land and he brought the rest, yeah? He wanted the notoriety of having built this building on this corner lot in a, you know. Really nice part of town. Exactly. And, okay, yep. cool. So, and he had some plans sitting in his desk that were already drawn and he said, well, let's tweak these a little bit, but this will work. Do you have the capital? Well, no, but you know, we'd love to have this building here. And through a course of events that are similar to this, they kept calm. And when, I mean, he basically went and found some capital to get started. Then they rented out the rooms in, I think it was, it might've been apartments. I think it was gonna become apartments when he was done with it. Um, you know, they stood firm on not dipping into their business funds because mm -hmm. they needed those to run the business. Um, and, and they just kept on holding that vision in their subconscious mind and trusting, hey, it's done. And yes, they, they ended up with the capital because they collected the first month's rent from everyone. But it's that story and stories like that where when you make a decision like that, when you can set out after a goal, and when you can be okay with right. doing illogical things, you know, that's when you see big results. So